Hey, how's it, YouTube? All right, right off the bat, excuse all the noise. It's Saturday. Everyone has been sick this week, so I've got the laundry going, I've got canning going, I've got the dishwasher going, so it's kind of loud in my kitchen, along with the furnace, because it's pretty cold here today in Michigan. So today, we are going to make apple pie jam. Um, I've never made this before, so we're going to make it together. I'm really excited because it seems like a really, really simple recipe. And um, I'm just going to let you know right off the bat what you need. Of course, you're going to need a pot. And I have my um, enameled cast iron uh, pot here, which I absolutely love. If you guys don't have one of these, treat yourself and get one. It's incredible. I love it. It's my favorite thing to cook in, uh, especially lately. The more I use it, the more I love it. Um, you're going to need four cups of diced apples. And I put it in a four cup measuring cup and I did add a little water and a little apple juice already. Make sure your hands are super clean. Um, and what you wanna do is once you get four cups, which is what I have here, you're going to cover the apples with some water until it gets topped off in the measuring cup. All right, maybe we could do a little bit, a little bit more, there we go, all right. And that's the amount of water that you're going to need. It ends up being, it looks like it ends up being about a cup of water. You're going to need two tablespoons of lemon juice. You're going to need a teaspoon um, of cinnamon. You're going to need a quarter teaspoon of, actually it's one and a quarter teaspoons of ground cinnamon. So a little bit extra cinnamon in this one. A quarter teaspoon of ground nutmeg. You're going to need a quarter teaspoon of ground ginger. I'm sure you could leave that out if you don't have any. I don't think it would be that big of a deal. And you're going to need six tablespoons of the classic all fruit pectin. Now I have two of these out because I'm almost out of the one. Hopefully I have six tablespoons in there, but just in case I can open up the new pack. Um, you're also going to need four cups of white granulated sugar and one cup of firmly packed brown sugar. Now, I don't have my KitchenAid, and I have not made any brown sugar in my, um, in my food processor yet, um, so I'm probably going to just add um, a cup of sugar in a little bit of molasses and just kind of roll with it, because that's how I do. <laughs> Alright, so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and while I have all this stuff out, and I think I'm just going to scooch it over just a little bit. Okay, we're just gonna go ahead and dump all these ingredients in. So, there goes the apples. You get my measuring spoons. Two tablespoons of lemon juice. Now, I use Granny Smith apples. Um, I've seen where people have combined a couple different kind of apples. I like the bite and the crispness and the tartness of the Granny Smith. So I'm hoping with the sweetness of the jam part and the tartness of the apple, it's going to be a great combination. Okay, one and a quarter teaspoon of brown cinnamon. And ignore my neighbor's dog. Quarter teaspoon of ground nutmeg. Quarter teaspoon of ground ginger. And we're going to go ahead and just add in the pectin. So it's going to be six tablespoons of pectin. Oh, and I think I have just enough. Okay, I'm going to give all of this a good stir around. And then I'm going to go ahead, get it on the stove, and I'm going to bring this up to a boil. When I get to that point, I will bring you guys back. Okay, guys, this is up to a boil that I cannot stir down any longer. And now it is time to add the sugar. I'm going to go ahead and just turn off the heat while I do that. Okay. Look at that, my sugar bowl. Okay. Four cups of white sugar. And then it is 
one cup of brown sugar that's packed. So I'm going to add a little bit of a scooping um, cup of white sugar to this. And then I'm going to add a dollop of molasses. Give this a really good stir. There you have it. Now I'm going to go ahead and bring this back up to a boil. And I'm going to boil it for, once it reaches to a boil that I can't stir down, I'm going to time it for one minute. Then I'm going to turn off the timer, put it over on my counter, and that's when I'll bring you back and we'll get to canning this. Alrighty guys, we are ready to get canning. Now... Let's see here, I've got my scoop, I've got all of this stuff in the boiling water in the canner to make sure it's all sterilized. I'm going to replace that spoon and put my scoop in there. If you guys can see what the jam looks like, it looks phenomenal. Okay, so let's get this up. Here and I'm just gonna empty my jars and Mason is up from his nap. <laughs> of course, perfect timing, kids. All right, let me go get him out of the crib and I'll be right back. Okay, and like last time, I forgot to turn the camera on when I did my first jar. So here we are, we are all set up. Uh, this recipe says it makes six half pints, but I went ahead and grabbed out a pint jar just in case because like my carrot cake jam, I had an ac actually I had a whole pint uh, left over. Um, I will show you the jam. There it is, apple pie jam. It looks and smells absolutely incredible. So here we are. And we are going to actually. I'm going to have. I'm going to put put it in this jar. Might be a little easier to see. So I'm just going to go ahead and put my funnel. We are filling this up to a quarter inch headspace. And just like our carrot cake jam, we want to make sure that we have a lot of apples, but not too many to where we leave our other jars wanting <laughs> for some. So just be careful not to overfill with too many apples. Fill it up to a quarter inch head space. Remove that. I go ahead and I put this in my uh, canner to um, sterilize. And again, I just kind of, I debubble it, make sure there's no bubbles in there. But I also really kind of push down those apples. Because that's the prettiest part of the jam. Then I'm going to, I have a little ramekin here full of vinegar. I'm just going to dip my cloth in vinegar, wipe the rim. You want to make sure you wipe these rims really good because um, it is jam and it is extremely sticky. And you don't want anything in the way of your seal. Alright, finger tip tight. And there you have it. Apple pie jam. All right, that little guy is going right in the canner. Okay, so I'm going to finish filling these, and once I have my canner all full, I'll bring you back and show you what it looks like. Alrighty, guys, I have all six in the canner. I'm just going to go ahead and lower this down. Make sure you have at least two inches of water above your jars. And I'm just going to wait to make sure that this goes back to a rolling boil, which it has. So what we're going to do is we're going to cover this. And I'm going to set the timer for 10 minutes. And once 10 minutes is up, I will be back and we will pull these from the canner. All right. And when that, while that is processing, um, I just wanted to show you guys that I um, didn't have quite enough again to um, make a pint. But I definitely have enough to use in those um, wonton wraps that I told you guys I wanted to try to make where you fry the, you put a little bit of jam in the wonton, roll it up and then deep fry it and then, you know, 
sprinkle them with cinnamon and sugar. So I have enough for that. I have enough for, um, oh gosh, and I forgot who asked me. But somebody asked me if I could, um, make a video putting the jam in bread and, uh, making, make a braided bread with it. And I said, definitely. So I have enough to go ahead and do that. So, also have one lid and one ring. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just let this cool down before I, you know, put a lid on it. Um, and then this I will use in that bread recipe or in those wontons. And uh, I'll just store it in my fridge. Again, if you don't know how to can, you can make this jam. Just put it in jars and put it in your fridge instead of processing it. And uh, you'll be good to go. At least then you'll be able to enjoy homemade jam, especially for the holidays. So, all right guys, sorry I'm so winded and out of breath. I've got so many things going on and Matt is in bed sick. And um, yeah, just kind of trying to do the whole mommy thing <laughs> today and get everyone taken care of and the house clean and blah. All right, so um, in 10 minutes, I will be back and we will pull those jars out of the canner together. Alrighty, my lovies, we are all done. So let's go ahead and remove the lid, we'll turn off the heat. Very careful or use um, uh, gloves when you do this. I like to make sure that all the bubbles are totally gone before I pull it up out of the canner. And then there we have it. There's our jars. So over here, again I have this um, drying little mat. It just gives it a little cushion. You never ever want to put, just for you newbies out there, I still consider myself a newbie, but I'm going on my one year anniversary of doing all this, so I guess I'm not that much of a newbie anymore, especially after everything I've canned. Um, but one thing that you never want to do, you guys, for those of you who are new, is put your jars on a cold counter because you can crack them. They can crack and break. They go through such a major temperature change once they come out of that boiling water, especially when you pressure can because they're even hotter. So you always want to make sure, that's why these are great because they're cushioned and, um, you know, they're warm. And it kind of retains the heat a little bit. And that's why I cover my jars with a cloth or a towel afterwards too just to keep in the heat and that that way they can slowly come up to room temperature um, over the next 24 hours without any kind of rush and without any kind of draft from my window or from my chimney because I have a chimney here um, over where my um, fan exhaust is and a lot of times cold air can come through there too so here we have it. Hope you guys can see that. Let me see. I'm going to turn on my kitchen light. Does that help at all? I hate that kitchen light. But we'll see. I don't know. I don't know if you guys can see better or not. Hopefully my next house will have better lighting. Alright. So... There we have it. And I'm just going to lower you, guys, down to kind of eye level a little bit more. Actually, I'm just going to take you off your tripod and, um, and we'll view them this way. And I love that you're able to see the chunks of apples by the way the apples are extremely tender I will say um, like I said I went with the the very tart granny Smith and I'm so glad I did that tartness gives it a really beautiful like bite to it um, I'm thinking that if I had used a sweeter apple it would just be a little too sickly sweet uh, because the syrup part the jam part the liquid part is so sweet as it is that um the tartness of that granny smith apple oh it's really really good so you've got a, a nice tart apple flavor with this you know the sweetness of the syrup part and they're already popping 
so there you have it. Um, I try to make this video a little bit faster. Uh, I don't want to have to, you know, keep making you guys go through these long-winded videos, but you know how I am. I like to talk and talk and talk. <laughs> so there you have it, guys. Let me know if you give this recipe a try. Um, I tried Googling uh, apple jam, um, uh, apple pie jam here on YouTube, and I could actually only find one video from that Jolene Studebaker, <laughs> and I never knew anything about her channel. Um, I'm going to leave you a link down below because I find her channel extremely fun, and um, she has some really good recipes on there, and she's the only one that I could find that did apple pie jam, so... If you do this and you make YouTube videos, you should maybe videotape it so that more and more people can have some exposure to Apple Pie Jam. Um, if not, go ahead and like this video, share me, and uh, hopefully other people will see how easy it is. Again, if you don't can, that's okay. Put it in jars, put it in your fridge. You can still give it as a gift. Just have everyone keep it in their fridge. Um, and it'll last a couple months just like, you know, any other jam that you have in your fridge. So... I hope you guys give this a try. I'm going to tell you now, it is phenomenal. So, that is it. All right, guys, peace in and peace out, and I will see you guys soon.